Chicken oh. fries. Move over, Thai menus. There's another taste that's capturing the tongues of hungry people everywhere, especially here in Central Florida. It's Indian cuisine. It's delicious. It's Indian. First time I've seen Indian food here. If you've been to any of the art fairs, festivals, and outdoor concerts in southwest Volusia County, then you've seen Stephen and Rachel Paltrow's food truck, Parvathy's Kitchen. For many beginner, as well as practice cooks, Creating Indian dishes can be intimidating to prepare. There's a complexity of flavors, both sweet and savory, as well as a spiciness that can enhance a subtle taste that could make or break a dish. This is the spicy mango and sweet apricot chutney. Both Stephen and Rachel have taken this exotic food culture and made it easy to understand for those home cooks. I caught up with them recently for my own one-on-one -on -one tutorial for curry for beginners 101. So today we are going to be making an aromatic basmati rice. Okay. We use the basmati rice and then we're going to be making our main entree which is a South Indian chicken curry with mm -hmm. peas and potato. Okay. And finally we're going to uh, end it off with our Indian accompaniment salad which is a cucumber raita made on a yogurt based sauce. In the basmati rice, we're going to use the basmati rice, mm -hmm. and this is just a long grain rice okay. that um, comes from Him the Himalayan mountains. Mm -hmm. And in that is going to go some whole spices, and the whole spices that we are going to be using are the star anise, mm -hmm. the cloves, bay leaf, cinnamon stick, and cardamom. Okay. And you're going to add this into your water of your rice when you are cooking it. Okay. Yep. And then I also uh, generally use a pinch of turmeric. That's okay. just to give it a little bit of color, okay. but turmeric also has its own medicinal properties and antioxidants and uh, anti-inflammatories for the body that you want to get as well. But we use a lot of that in our cooking, okay. both in the rice and in the curries too. Okay. Now with the curry, because that's, that's going to be a bit more, I don't say complicated, but it has more, more to it. So what all yes. would, we, uh, would you find in the curry dish? Yes, in the curry dish it's the same thing, layering as well. Layering in Indian cooking is big. You mm -hmm. layer and layer and layer. So you start off with your oil, uh, which we always use coconut based oil. Mm -hmm. um, then you're going to add your um, dry, your whole spices okay. again. The whole spices mm -hmm. we'll use is a bay leaf, a cinnamon stick, a star anise. And then we would add um, our cumin seed Okay. and our black mustard seed okay and so you add that into the pot and then you're going to be adding next your onions green chilies and then you're going to add ginger and garlic paste okay once that's added your curry leaf base and then you're going to add uh, let that cook for a little bit tomato tomato paste okay and then you're going to let that also just blend in together really mix well with mm -hmm. the spices and then you're going to add your chicken um, potatoes let that cook for at least about four or five minutes okay. and then you're going to add your peas and you're going to round it all up, let it simmer on the stove for a while and garnish it with some fresh cilantro. Okay. And now the cucumber raita. Yes. Okay. Now what goes into this guy? Um, so cucumber raita, this is a mm -hmm. pretty simple, straightforward um, recipe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just fresh cucumbers. Okay. Um, we peel them, we de-seed them mm -hmm. and we just kind of cut them up into just little cubes or okay. little angles however you want mm -hmm. uh, this is a plain yogurt okay uh, we use a just a regular standard yogurt you can use low-fat yogurt uh, we use about a cup of yogurt for this particular recipe and this mm -hmm. is about a whole cucumber okay um, in the raita it's gonna have we use a little bit of sugar a little bit of cumin a little bit of uh, pepper mm -hmm. some we use Himalayan salt oh, okay. and a little bit of uh, paprika okay uh, this is a smoked paprika just to kind of give it a little bit of smokiness to it and we're just going to introduce them together so what we do is almost just make like a dressing of almost just a basic mm -hmm. cucumber sauce okay. um, and then we'll introduce them together and that'll be just its own sauce so it's pretty much made about six ingredients so in aromatic basmati rice our main ingredient is the basmati rice okay um, we're going to be adding the whole spices to it and in the whole spices that we're going to be using we're going to be using cardamom uh, cloves, bay leaf, cinnamon stick, star anise, and a pinch of turmeric powder just to give it some okay. color. Okay. Um, and we generally like to use Himalayan pink salt. Okay, now I've seen salt. You know, yes. There's table salt, there's sea salt. Himalayan pink salt, I mean, yes. is, is there something 
different about? Yes, they um, they uh, they are, it's rich in iodine. Okay. Um, and it comes also from Himalayas. Mm -hmm. It's uh, from a, a salt. Uh, other alternative names they call it is pink Himalayan, black mm -hmm. salt as well. Okay. Um, and it's really it's 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 very uh, rich to be used in, this, in the cooking. But generally in Indian cooking we like to use the okay. Himalayan salt. So today we're going to be doing uh, one cup rice. Okay. Uh, generally one cup rice will serve about two to three people. You basically oh. want to just add your rice in. Okay. And then once you add your rice in, you're going to add your whole spices like we spoke of earlier. Okay. Now how much would you put in? You go ahead and you're going to do it. Oh, I, oh, goody. Okay. One bay leaf. Okay. okay so let's, one. See if gonna, let's see if you remember gonna, all yeah, the <laughs> Okay. 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 So oh, one nice. bay leaf, um, one star anise. Okay. So now I'm only using one of each because okay. the portion of rice is only one cup. Okay. Because, it, okay. And that would, it would vary the more right. rice, the more. Exactly. Okay. You would uh, increase it. Um, you would do at least uh, two cloves. Okay. Two little cloves. Okay. One and two. Yep. And then you will add um, a cardamom pod. This is green cardamom. Now, green, okay. a cardamom can kind of in green and black. Okay. The black one is a little more concentrated in the taste. Okay. But we use the green one. So just one? Just one. Okay. And what I like to do with the cardamom is oh, give you it a squeeze little, it. Kind just, of like you just pop a press. It. You just want to pop it a little bit. Okay. So in inside the way, cardamom, there's a bunch of little seeds. Yeah, All the seeds are in there. Open one to show so we're you. kind of going to release the seeds okay. out of it. Um, so we've got the bay leaf, we've got the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the cloves. Yep. The star anise. Now we're going to add the cinnamon stick. Okay. One cinnamon stick. And um, that's it on the whole spices. Did you put the star anise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I generally like, you can have your rice white, mm -hmm. but to give it a little bit color, get more fancy, you can add just like a little pinch of oh. the turmeric. Just like a little, you can, yeah, you can go in a bit like pinch. that much? Yeah. You want to, you, you could have used this, but you want to wash your fingers yeah. because you don't Ooh. want them to stay. Yeah, it looks like I've been eating Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yes. Don't rub that on your clothes now. Um, so, yeah, so you go ahead and add a little bit of that mm -hmm. and some salt. You just want to add, you know, a little bit just. Uh, and that's about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon? That's about half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Yeah. So, and then you just want to add your one and a half cup water to it. Okay. Put the lid on and, and then turn your rice cooker on. Set it and, and go. Set it and you're done. So cucumber raita is basically a uh, accompaniment mm -hmm. um, or a salad that we normally use with our cooking. Mm -hmm. And um, we normally have it with our entree meal. Yeah. Um, it kind of is a very soothing, soft taste to it. So it breaks that little heavy spice that you have if you having a very a dish that's very spicy. Mm -hmm. But yogurt is just a great accompaniment to Indian dishes itself. Okay, now what goes into it? Because it doesn't look like it has quite as many ingredients as like the curry does. Right. Um, so basically we have uh, the plain yogurt and we have uh, cucumber and we have the spices. Go the spices. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how, how's everything prepared? Um, so basically it's very simple. We're going to mm -hmm. just use some, some yogurt and some cucumber. Um, we're going to cut the, the cucumber, just clean it up mm -hmm. and set that aside, which we already have some here, but I'll show you how we cut the cucumber. Okay. It's pretty simple. Then we're going to introduce the, uh, the ingredients into the yogurt. Okay. Um, so now uh, you're saying you know, the way that the cucumber is chopped or cut? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we usually take the skins off the cucumbers. Uh -huh. um, I think a simple way of, of doing the cucumber is mm -hmm. you can skin it right with a knife. You can oh, okay. just do it like mm -hmm. that. Um, you can use a peeler um, if you wanted to get fancy and leave a little bit of the green on there. Mm -hmm. You could. Um, and then, so that's kind of just a real simple way of cutting the cucumber. Once you have the cucumber chopped up and prepared, what are the different uh, spices that you have that'll go into it? Okay, so I'll go into that one real quick. So we have the basic yogurt, it's just a plain yeah. yogurt. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and we're gonna use a uh, quarter, quarter teaspoon of salt. And that's a Himalayan? We use a Himalayan salt, Thai okay. minerals. Okay. Uh, it you know, has a nice taste to it. It's kind of neat color to it mm -hmm. um, and it just, away from your standard mm -hmm. from your standard salt um, the ratio of sugar so just basically a plain white sugar granulated sugar okay and that is a half a teaspoon these are quarter teaspoons quarter teaspoon okay so for our cup of yogurt we're using a quarter teaspoon of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt okay um, now we're gonna go to some paprika okay and we're gonna use a quarter teaspoon quarter teaspoon mm -hmm. of the paprika too much of that's going to change the color of the yogurt, so you don't want it to get too orange or too red. Mm -hmm. And we use a smoked um, 
paprika as well. Okay. It just gives you that little more smoky taste to it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get a little earthy and we'll add a little bit of the cumin and we're going to go with a teaspoon. Okay. So that's one teaspoon. One teaspoon mm -hmm. of the cumin and we'll use one teaspoon of black pepper. Black pepper, peppercorn. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple dressing. So basically we're just making a, a yogurt dressing. Mm -hmm. So once it's combined, does it need to sit for a little bit or is um, it pretty much you like can ready introduce to go? it. You can introduce it. I, I mean, the sugars and the salts will break down if you let it sit for, mm -hmm. for a few minutes and they'll dissolve in there. Um, so yeah, I think to get full flavors, if you let it sit for 10, 15 minutes, that mm -hmm. should be good. But then, then we'll then just we go ahead add the salad, yeah, mm -hmm. make the salad right, at, right in there. Now with this, I guess, is this considered like a traditional uh, dish, you know, Southern Indian dish? Mm -hmm. This is this you, the raita is um, generally throughout India. Okay. We have raita all over, but we generally, you know, use it with almost all our dishes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll always have a raita at home, basically. Yep. Okay. And it's good, like Stephen was saying earlier, you can make this and it can stay for at least, you know, a good two two days mm -hmm. in the fridge. So if you make a big batch, you know, you can have it for today's supper and tomorrow's supper oh, as okay. well. So. But yeah, it's and it's a great. Mm. It's it's also you know very healthy. Yeah. It's a healthier um, option for having a salad during the mm -hmm. day because you know plain yogurt is really great for the body mm -hmm. um, and cucumbers you can't go wrong. The South Indian uh, chicken curry with peas and potato mm -hmm. um, is very similar. Like most of our entrees, is mm -hmm. layered cooking. So yes. a lot of layers go into it. Uh, you want to start off with oil. We okay. generally use coconut oil. Okay. Um, you can see it's um, it's gone all together, but mm -hmm. generally they'll be in the heat. Mm -hmm. It flattens out. Um, and then we're going to be using whole spices. Okay. And the whole spices that we are going to be using today in that is the bay leaf, uh, star anise, cinnamon stick, and we are going to be adding mustard seed to it and okay. cumin seeds. Okay. You're going to let that um, sit in the pot for at least 30 seconds. Okay. And once it heats up a little bit, then you will hear the mustard seed start pop to pop little. like yes. what you're saying okay yes it'll pop a little bit and then <laughs> once it pops in mm -hmm. then you're going to add in your sliced onions mm -hmm. um, sliced onions chili is optional and these green chilies are the these little green ones right here they very very spicy yeah so they're very optional so if you want to if you want to add it you can but mm -hmm. if you don't want to you can elim eliminate them okay. and then you're going to add your curry leaf which is basically curry leaf is our Indian parsley so um, you can go ahead and smell it You'd find this in um, every Indian home, so mm -hmm. and uh, we use it in all our cooking. You can use it as a garnish, or you can use mm -hmm. it in your cooking as well. And um, you can even find them in Indian Asian grocery stores. Okay. So then you're going to add that. Once you add, have added that, you're going to add your ginger and garlic paste. So okay, that's like you said before: garlic and ginger. You mince it up and then you combine it. Yes, okay. right. you blend it together, mm -hmm. and this is your ginger garlic paste. You can go ahead and smell okay. that too. And you can see, yes. you know, it's got that strong. Yeah, it actually, the ginger and the garlic kind of balance each other out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. We usually, we, we'll put it in the uh, little food processor just mm -hmm. to kind of get it to to really kind of puree almost together. When you do it just with a knife and a fine knife, mm -hmm. it's kind of minced. Yeah. Um, when you put them in the processor, you can really kind of get them to break down and kind of blend a little bit better together. That's yeah. a good Marble point. Paste. And, mm -hmm. and another yeah. good point is you can actually make this in advance and keep and it in stay. your... it'll stay? It'll yeah. stay. Put a you little can oil. Keep it, yeah, a little, little bit of oil. Mm -hmm. So you can make it in a little jar, um, you know, mi mix the two together. And what I normally add in mm -hmm. it is a little bit of uh, turmeric to it. Okay. So turmeric and olive oil. So you just layer the cap with olive oil. Mm -hmm. You can keep it in the fridge. It'll stay for days. Um, another option, my mom used to do this mm -hmm. often, is make a huge batch and freeze it. So, so this will freeze then? It, okay. It'll freeze. So you get a little ice cube tray mm -hmm. and you put them in the little small ice cube. Okay, so now mushroom. you have it pre-measured and you just done. Exactly. So all you got to do is just pop out a little cube and mm -hmm. it's ready to go. But this is the ginger and garlic paste that we're mm -hmm. going to add to the onions and the uh, chilies once it's a little um, translucent. Okay. Once that's done, then you're going to be adding in your tomato and your tomato paste. Okay, so it's two different things. Chopped up tomato and tomato paste. Right. And that's just because you want to get that flavor of tomato in there. The tomato paste is totally optional as well. 
So once you add that, I generally like when I'm cooking with tomato mm -hmm. to add a pinch of sugar in it. Depending on which type of tomato you mm -hmm. use, the, uh, it's you know it's uh, there's acid levels in the tomato, yeah. so that sugar is just going to break down that acid level a, l a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so once you add that together, mix them all together, and then you're going to add your whole sp your spices. Mm -hmm. And once they blended together, let them cook for at least a good uh, 30 seconds to you know uh, two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, let the tomatoes cook a little more, and then once the tomatoes cooked, um, you want to add your chicken. So today we mm -hmm. are using uh, chicken breast, okay. which is just cubed. Now you can either use chicken breast or you can use mm -hmm. bone-in chicken. It's okay. all up to you. Um, bone-in chicken, the only thing is the time process, the time cook, the cook time on it will be a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, and then potatoes. So the potatoes are going to go in with the chicken. Okay. Um, potatoes, you can cut them in up fine or you can cut them up, you know, a little bit chunkier. Mm -hmm. The chunkier ones are going to take a little longer to cook. Okay. So that is why, I, you know, we've cut them really small. Mm -hmm. So it's going to cook evenly with the chicken. Um, and then once you let that cook for at least about four minutes, you're going to go ahead and add in your frozen peas. And mm -hmm. frozen peas take quick to cook. So that'll be cooked. And then once it's cooked, it'll take about at least 25 minutes for them to simmer on the stove. Once it's done, you switch off the heat and garnish with some fresh cilantro that's chopped. Okay. Now for a dish this size, about how many tomatoes would you be looking at using? So we're using three. Mm -hmm. uh, today's dish uh, is going to be serving at least uh, two to three people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have three tomatoes cut up here. Okay. So and you use one onion, you use two onions? Or? One onion, mm -hmm. um, one, one, one to one and a half onion. That was a little larger onion mm -hmm. that we used. but preference up to you if you prefer more onions you can go ahead and add two onions that's perfectly fine too um, the peas is uh, one cup peas here mm -hmm. I have two small meat uh, two medium-sized uh, mm -hmm. potatoes and uh, we had one pound of chicken uh, one pound of chicken mm -hmm. and then you know the ginger and garlic is just basically mm -hmm. two um, two tablespoons what's the history behind Parvathy's Kitchen. I have a culinary background mm -hmm. uh, in hotels and restaurants, and, and Rachel also has her culinary background. So it just seemed, it seemed like it was a possible idea. Yeah. Um, so we started really at a farmer's market. We started mm -hmm. a farmer's market um, selling spices. Uh -huh. And we were, we were um, selling the spices, and there were the customers that were asking for different Indian um, treats, like samosas and, mm -hmm. and small different snacks. So Rachel had the, the, the idea, and then she was like, you know, why don't when we start making some of these snacks and putting them out there, just to, you know, yeah. just just you know, just put it out there. It was <laughs> it was a fun thing, but also it was a, a social um, activity. And uh, so sure enough, we, we we made some samosas, and, and Rachel had this this great recipe, and we put them out there, and uh, and and people really took to it. They really enjoyed it. They really mm -hmm. liked it. So fast forward probably six months mm -hmm. to that, um, and, and now people want to know some of the customers. Well, how about some curry? How about, you know, can we have some curry yeah. and, and can we get a little bit, you know, more into into tasting some of the foods? So so we're like, okay, that's a great idea, but you know, how do we how do we bring that out to the market? Yeah. You know, one thing is home cooking, another thing <clears throat> is trying to do mm -hmm. it, you know, commercially. So so the next logical step was let's 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 build a small kitchen. Let's do a yeah. small kitchen, let's um, let's let's go out there and and, um, and put out the cuisine and uh, and just see how it goes, see mm -hmm. how the feedback is. For me, learning to cook started at home. Mm -hmm. My mom and both my dad, in, mm -hmm. in, and generally, you know, it goes back, people generally say, oh, you know, dads don't really cook in the mm -hmm. kitchen. But my dad actually really did a lot of cooking, and he taught me a lot of things that I've learned and I imply into our cooking mm -hmm. today. So I watched both mom, dad, and my grandparents also cook. And so I got a lot of um, influence from them. Mm -hmm. I graduated with hospitality and culinary degree in South Africa mm -hmm. and learned variety of cuisines that we learned in school. Mm -hmm. But the Indian cuisine just still stuck to me because it's home to me. Yeah. So, um, you know, fast forward uh, 15 years later, mm -hmm. I come to America and meet my wonderful husband. And um, when I was back in South Africa growing up, in college, I always used to see these little food vending people with yeah. little carts selling mm -hmm. the little, you know, whatever they sold. And in the back of my mind, it always played me like, oh, one day maybe I should do that. And mm -hmm. you know, it was just something that struck me, but I never really thought of that. So next we're gonna be adding the ginger and garlic. And this is the paste that I was telling mm -hmm. you about. Um, you know, you add, you make a blend out of the ginger and garlic. Yeah. So you're gonna add that in there. And you basically just gonna mix it. Mm -hmm. You want the ginger and garlic to just cook in with that onions. Okay. 
going to start off with the cumin powder. One teaspoon of cumin powder. One okay. teaspoon of coriander powder. Okay. One tea, uh, two teaspoons of the garam masala. And so, that's that's the combination of different spices. Yes, that is the blend of the different spices. And uh, one tea, a quarter teaspoon of the turmeric. Okay. Now uh, the chili powder, depending on your preference, because yeah. remember we've already added. The you already had peppers in there, right? Mm -hmm. So you can either opt out of the chili powder, or you can just go ahead and add a little bit of chili powder. Okay. So since okay. you're going to be trying this, mm -hmm. what do you want? Uh, yeah, let's live dangerously. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So we're just going to put a little bit of it, just so you. There you go. Now that that's cooked for at least about thirty seconds, we're going to be adding our tomatoes. So this was three, uh, three tomatoes cut. Mm -hmm. We add the tomatoes in and the tomato paste. Okay. So, um, like I was saying earlier, the um, whenever I cook with tomatoes, I tend to put a little bit of sugar, just a pinch of sugar, mm -hmm. just to cut that acidity in it. Yeah, okay. So. So you give it a little bit of a mix. You want that tomato paste to kind of start cooking in there with that. Yeah. Onions. And now you can just bring up your heat a little bit more. And yet again, if it is sticking, mm -hmm. you can add a little bit more water so it will kind of loosen it up and not stick to the bottom of the pan. So once that's all getting mm -hmm. cooked, can you get the aroma and smell? Yeah, I was going to say, it, it's really becoming aromatic. Mm -hmm. The You can smell that a lot of the spices are starting to really open up. Right. So I'm going to just increase the heat a little bit more. And then you're going to add some more water in it so you can just get that... Um, So you can see that the tomatoes are kind of softening up. Yeah, it's getting a it has a really nice color to it. Yes, yes. So you want to, you can see it's almost like you know becoming like a little gravy kind of a thing. Yeah. So once that's cooking in, and the tomatoes is going to cook further more because when you add right. the chicken in, mm -hmm. so you've given it at least about a minute or so of cooking. You're going to add your chicken in. Okay. And like I was saying earlier, we're using breast. Mm -hmm. But if you use bone-in chicken, the bone-in chicken is going to take a little longer. Right. And okay. then you're going to add your potatoes. And you're going to stir that well together. And now at this point, I would like to add a little bit of salt. Okay. Um, the, the Himalayan salt. The Himalayan salt. And salt is good because you can always layer it in. So you can add the salt in now, mm -hmm. and then when I'm going to add the peas in, add a little bit more so that it breaks down and it gets into all of the food. You're going to put the lid on it. At least you're going to cook it for about four to five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then once it's cooked on four to five minutes on medium high, then you're going to add in your um, frozen peas. And this was one cup of peas. Okay. If you like peas, you can go ahead and add more peas too. Yeah. You know, um, and any other vegetable like carrots, sweet corn as well. Okay. So you could put anything else, but this is a traditional way that we cook it back home. But any other vegetable is perfectly fine in it. Broccoli. Mm -hmm. The broccoli is, um, you know, you want to tend to add it like right in the end because you don't yeah. want it to get too mushy. Right. Um, and cauliflower, you can also do this with cauliflower as well. So an alternative would be. Uh, adding the cauliflower and the cauliflower you would add in with the chicken as well because cauliflower okay. tends to take a little longer yeah, to cook as well. Yeah, a little bit denser. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, another vegetable you can add into it is cabbage. Oh, okay. Yep. If you slice a cabbage fine, you can add the cabbage in. You can add the cabbage in during the chicken uh, time too. And like I said before, now we're going to add a little bit more of that salt. So we just want to get that salt. And we're gonna let this cook for a little while. I'm going to add a little water in it okay. because it, it probably might be better with a little gravy in it. But if you like your curries a, a little drier, mm -hmm. then no need to add water. Just check on it from time to time because you don't want it to burn. That water is also just gonna help the cooking process for the potatoes because remember these potatoes might take a little longer. That is why we cut them really, you know, smaller. So you mm -hmm. want them to cook quicker. Yeah. So. A little more water. And 
that should be fine. Mm -hmm. Put a lid on it and let it cook for at least about another 15, 15 minutes mm -hmm. and okay. it should be good. So here we have our nice delicious curry that we just made. Mm -hmm. The South Indian chicken curry with peas and potato. As you can see the cinnamon stick is here. Uh -huh. The star anise is here mm -hmm. and the big bay leaf. So when you make this at home, mm -hmm. before you serve it to your guests and your family, you want to remove these. Go ahead these. and take those guys yeah, out. Yeah, you want to okay. take them out. Just going to move this out here. You're going to bring in your raita. You're going to put that right there on the side, like so. And then we are going to garnish it with our cilantro. Nice little garnish right there. And I always like to take a little leaf. Okay. So right there. And right here we have aromatic basmati rice, chicken, South Indian chicken curry with peas and potato, mm -hmm. and a cucumber right there. Okie dokie. So go ahead and try it. Dig in. Mmm. Everything's just like, it's like a circus in your mouth. <laughs> oh, wow. I think it's, just a whole medley of different flavors. Yeah. Mmm. That is really good. What did you think of the uh, the chicken and the, um, the flavors with the chicken in it? All the different flavors are coming through. It's like, what, depending on what part of my tongue they land on. <laughs> it's hard to pinpoint, right? Because it's such a blend. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of very warm flavor. Yep. I know it sounds kind of silly, but with the chilies and the cinnamon, the cumin, mmm, and the green mango pickle. So is it spicy for you? Actually, no. No? It's, right about, it's just right. Okay.
Okay, so you want to see the seeds. Mm -hmm. So let's get this black seeds in your hand right there. And okay, you so can go ahead and even taste one if you'd like. And you can see the, the flavor of it. They're pretty strong. They're not spicy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of aromatic, a little floral, but there's a strong pungent taste that's going to mm. hit you. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So, <laughs> like a lemon? It's mm. got a little, like, little bit of... A little bit like a lime peel, lemon yeah, peel, a little uh -huh. citrus. It's got the... Um, it does have that, that little citrus. Mm -hmm. that's you actually have to kind of get to used to it. It's actually kind of good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so once you add that mm -hmm. in, like I said, you know, you give it a little pop there. Yep. So you want to let the, that aroma come out of the pot itself. Um, Yep. Now, with rice, like you were saying, with this, it's pretty much foolproof. But if you're me, like the old school, and I'm cheap and I don't have a rice cooker, I, I use a stove. Yes. When it's done, do you, I mean, do you fluff it with a yes. fork? Or, you know, what it, yes. So, so let me talk a little bit about the mm -hmm. stovetop process. If you're doing it on a stovetop, yeah. you would uh, put your pan on the, uh, on the stove. Um, then you would add your water in, mm -hmm. uh, get your water to a little bit of boil. Drop your rice in after it's washed nicely. Yeah. Add in all the, the whole spices that we spoke of. Mm -hmm. Give it a little mix and a stir. And then um, put your lid on and increase, uh, make it to get to the heat of the boiling, mm -hmm. to medium heat. Once it's boiled, drop the heat, leave the lid on still mm -hmm. and keep it there for like at least, you know, five minutes more and pull it off the stove. Take okay. a fork and fluff it together and your rice is done. Oh, okay. So you can look at the rice and see the the texture. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm just looking at looking at the grains. Yeah, you can go ahead and feel it too and see. Because of the grains, they're like it looks like a long grain. It is. It is a long grain rice. Yes. Now what's? Because I don't want to sound like I don't know, but mm -hmm. I really kind of like don't know. What's the difference with rice? Because you said this is basmati rice. A uh -huh. lot of times people will go to the store and they'll see a bag of a bag of rice. Right. You know. But obviously, it's not the same. Right. So, you know, what do people look for? You know, I can tell that the grains are longer, but what's the difference with rice? Well, let me let my wonderful husband explain some to you. Okay. Stephen, rice yes. man extraordinary. I am here to explain the rice. <laughs> yeah. um, so, basmati rice is, um, it's a long grain rice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a slender grain, um, and it's aromatic. Mm -hmm. um, it's interchangeable. Um, commonly, um, in the supermarket, a lot of us know jasmine rice. Yeah. So the difference is jasmine rice is coming from Thailand. It's okay. aromatic, um, and it's it's more of a floral mm -hmm. smell on the aromatic rice. So so there's these differences between how they smell, how they taste. Um, I think the jasmine rice tends to be a little bit stickier okay. than the basmati rice. Mm -hmm. Basmati rice, when you cook it, it's um, it's looser. Okay. You know, it's not such a tight grain where where, where they stick together to each other. Um, so, they're, but they're interchangeable. You know, mm -hmm. they're interchangeable. I think more in the basmati rice. There's more. In, it's found more in Mediterranean cooking. Um, it's 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 grown more in the foothills of the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of used more on that that region. Mm -hmm. um, in more of the Asian cooking, Thailand, Vietnamese cooking, uh, they use more of that jasmine rice. Um, but you know, they're, they're sticky. The jasmine's stickier. Okay, that's what I'm going to ask you because I've, I've heard people say that before that there are certain kinds of rice that are that it they're more suited for certain types of recipes like a stickier rice that would be something you'd find like uh, in sushi you know dishes yeah, like that yeah well traditionally even sushi rice is a whole different another rice mm -hmm. the grain is really really small it almost looks like almost like orzo because well, that, that's what I was going to ask you because this is long grain yeah and I've heard you know the short grain rice different types is uh, just a, a quick primer you know what would people look for in, a, in I rice I, I think when you're doing like a curry dish where mm -hmm. there's there's kind of a lot of gravy a lot of sauce yeah. 
the basmati rice and jasmine rice works really well. They kind of tend to absorb that a little bit, okay. and they kind of complement each other. Um, you know, like a really short, like a sushi type rice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a whole different style of cooking it, you yeah. know. So it's it's just specifically it's sticky, mm -hmm. but it but those grains don't mush together. Those grains actually stay independent to each other. Okay. It doesn't kind of just mush out. Mm -hmm. um, and it depends how long you cook it for, how much water you put into it. Mm -hmm. Basmati rice is pretty straightforward. It's it's cup of rice to a cup and a half of water. Okay. Um, jasmine rice is very similar on the ratios, um, and they both cook pretty fast. Uh, so. So when you're cooking rice, okay. Say if you're going to use a rice cooker like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you see the ratio a cup of rice to a cup and a half of water. How long would somebody cook it? Because I can never get it right. I'm either looking at al dente rice, which well, that's is why, That's why we love <laughs> modern science. Um, yeah. So a rice cooker is foolproof. I yeah. mean, it, it, it is to the point of, of putting the ingredients that you want in there and just letting it t the timer go. It's going to regulate the heat. It's going to time the heat. Mm -hmm. It's going to do all that stuff for us. Um, if we want to go traditional and actually boil it over an open flame, yeah. then we have to kind of control the heat manually mm -hmm. a little bit better. Um, same exact concepts. It's just it takes more of, you know, being over it and making mm -hmm. sure it gets done. I th I, and I think also with the rice cooker is the important part of it is your proportion of your amounts that you're using. Yeah. You have to use the exact amount of water mm -hmm. as ex to the exact amount of rice. Um, and yeah, yet again, you don't have to baby the rice cooker. You know, on mm -hmm. the stove, you have to be there constantly. You have to get the heat to a medium heat. Mm -hmm. Once it boils, reduce the heat, cover the, you know, you have to have the lid on. Okay. So you kind of have to be over the stove. This you can turn on a rice cooker and you can be gone, you know, doing whatever you need to and do. it'll take care of itself. It'll take care of yeah, itself. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Okay, so now that we have all the ingredients and I've, I've figured out how to how to cook rice. So with this, so what's the next step? I mean, does everything, you just dump everything in at once oh, or does it go yes. in a little bit at a time or? So rice, rice you want to rinse. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. there's different schools of thought. I'm, you know, rice is in a bag, it sits there for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to rinse the rice off of it. Some people say they may, you know, pull some of the minerals or, or, mm -hmm. or things out of it, but I think it's always nice to kind of rinse it off a little bit. Yeah. So rinse the rice, get it nice and nice and clean, drain most of the water out of it, um, and then you'll introduce it into your, um, into your pot. Mm -hmm. um, now, how you, how you put the rice in, it, the layers don't, I don't think really. No, they really don't mm -hmm. matter. There's a lot of water in them, so it's it's an excellent mm -hmm. accompaniment. If you want to try some, that'll be great. Sure, I'm I'm not one to uh, pass up a free taste. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So this is a, this is going to complement the food. Mm -hmm. So you know, with the rice and with the curry, um, this is going to be that cool part to it. Okie dokie. Let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's good. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of light. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the cucumber has it still has a lot of the crispness to it. Right. Right. Yeah. So you can you can get that cool sensation. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine having like a meal that's with a little bit extra mm -hmm. spice to it, that kind of brings that cooling sensation to the mouth as well. Uh, it's you know, I can taste. The different spices are they're all kind of like taking turns i guess you could say yes. like you know it's like an explosion in your mouth mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> mm. that's very good good mm -hmm. that's really good it's a meal in itself i mean it's, it is yeah you mm -hmm. can eat it just as a salad but you said you figured you would have just a little bit of of that on, mm -hmm. on the side with your rice and with your curry and then you just as you're eating it you're just kind of getting a little bit mm -hmm. of each or you're putting all of it on the spoon um so yeah because this so. i can see how this would play into you know, you're eating curry, and then you kind of take a break, get a bite of this, mm -hmm. with, and then some uh, rice. This is really tasty. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. One, two, three. 
Okay, John, on your on your cue. Five, three, two. Okay, Rachel. So to prepare the chicken curry. Yes. Okay. Walk me through the steps. So today we're going to be using the uh, chicken, uh -huh. the potato, the tomatoes, mm -hmm. onions, chilies, curry leaf, ginger and garlic, and the spices. Okay. So the steps that we're going to do first is get your pan on medium okay. low, and then you're going to add the coconut oil into it. Okay. Uh, so right here I have uh, two tablespoons of coconut oil. Okay. You can see that it's got. Out. There we go. Yeah. But then as soon as it hits the pan, then it loosens up. It's going to loosen mm -hmm. up right up because it's cold out there. So yeah. it kind of just tightens up. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens to coconut oil generally, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've got two tablespoons of coconut oil right there. You see it, it heats up pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so once it just, you know, you want it to coat the pan. Mm -hmm. And once it coats the pan, then you're going to be adding your um, spices. I'm going to move this a little bit in the back because I had this on and it got a little too hot. Okay. But you're going to add um, one tablespoon of mustard seed. Okay. And you hear it starting to crackle yeah. already. Yeah, like you hear it pop, yep. like you're, you're saying. hearing it pop. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of cumin seeds. Okay. And one bay leaf. Okay. One cinnamon stick. Okay. And one star anise. Okay. You're gonna let that just. And those, boil. they they all just kind of like, uh, not gonna say saute, but they they. They just they bring up the aroma. Up yeah. yeah. When you, uh, this is basically uh, you know heating the spice. Uh huh. And um, you get two types of you know roasting the spices. You can mm -hmm. get it with the dry roasting, which would be nothing, no yeah. oil was in there. And this is the wet spicing where we got the oil in it. Okay. So once you have that in there, mm -hmm. you're going to want to add your onions. Okay. You can hear it, it popped already, but because yeah. my pan was really hot. Mm -hmm. But if your pan is not hot, you may want to give it like at least another 30 seconds okay. or so. So you drop in your onions mm -hmm. with your chilies. Okay. Now I was going to ask you, with this this dish, Yeah. is this like a family dish? Is this something your that guess. you learned from your mom? Oh, yes. This was a common, this is a very, very common dish. Mm -hmm. You you We cook this like every every Saturday. We didn't really eat meat a lot. Yeah. We ate, you know, chicken maybe once a week. Uh -huh. And this would be on a Saturday. So this is basically a Saturday meal. But this is so common and quick that you can do this, you know, mm -hmm. e easy at home. So I added the curry leaf. Yeah, I was going to ask you now, it's like two stems of curry leaf, I guess? Yes. But you know it's optional. If you don't have it, you can do without it. Okay. It's just our Indian parsley, basically. Okay. So you stir it. You want the onions to get translucent. Okay. Um, and then you want the chilies to cook a little bit in it. Mm -hmm. You notice that I, I sliced the chilies in little small Yeah, they're rings. tiny. Mm -hmm. And that's because once you cook it, it's just going to dissolve. Okay. But if you don't want to, you can cut them in a long slit. Uh -huh. So you can pick it out later on. Okay. Now the thing is that if you're going to keep the seeds in the on in the chili, yeah. it's going to give more heat to it. Yeah, because that's where a lot of the heat it's in the seeds and in the ribs. Exactly. So if you just want to, you can when you slip the the chilies open, remove the seeds. Okay. And then just add the, the chili in. Okay. So as you can see, it's getting a little translucent. Yeah. Nice. They're, they're starting to soften up. Soften mm -hmm. up, looking nice, golden. You want to get that nice golden color in here. Now onions, you could use uh, yellow sweet onion, or you could use red onions. Its preference is up mm -hmm. to you, you know. So because once the onions start to cook, them, they they start to caramelize themselves, and they yes. bring out their own sweetness. They do, they do. And this is the cinnamon stick, and the cinnamon stick will also give that nice little sweetness to the mm -hmm. onion too. So it adds it in. So 